Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Yep, back again. Now, I previewed earlier uh, in my work some uh, issues with some Pen Fierce 3s, which just came out. And uh, we're going to get started on that one. Whether we're going to be able to finish this one in this video or if I'm going to have to wait for parts is going to be another thing. But right now, it's totally frozen. So that's unusual. Uh, as I mentioned, these are used in a commercial environment. They're used on a uh, charter boat that fishes these things every day. And for something just to lock up completely is, is kind of unusual. So we'll start with the problem diagnosis on this. And if we can repair it, maybe it's just something that's got some trapped uh, line or something inside of it. We'll go ahead and do that and do a full rebuild while we're at it to show you how to service this. And if we have to wait for parts, we'll come back and we'll finish the video that way. So uh, before I get started, I want to thank all of our first responders, frontline personnel, essential folks that are doing their jobs every day to keep us safe and healthy during this pandemic and to restore those of us that have contracted the uh, the virus uh, to health. Thank you for all it is that you do, whether you're a firefighter, uh, frontline individual, EMT, uh, medical, healthcare provider, etc. Just uh, really wanted to let you know how much it is appreciated. So I start by removing the external pieces and parts and the first one I took off was the spool. And the larger parts I can leave to the side, but the smaller parts I choose to put into a parts tray. And this is nothing more than the bottom of a milk jug. Uh, let's test the bale. The bale is not the issue for this thing sticking. Sometimes you can get a bale that will break a piece like the, the trip lever or something. And if it breaks the trip lever, then uh, it can jam the function. But in this case, that bale is going, but this rotor is not turning. So we'll take that off. Next up, we want to take the spool, uh, the, the handle off, and that's simply a reverse wind and away from the direction that it would be for you to um, install it or to crank the reel. And then we'll take the bump guard off, and this uses a case that uh, is a partial case. I call them partial cases because the case ends right here as opposed to going up inside the rotor. If the case was going up inside the rotor, then you would have to take the rotor off to complete the uh, disassembly, but in this case it's not. This is where those parts trays come in helpful because those little pieces like the screws that came off that bump guard can easily be lost on your uh, workbench. So I would recommend using a parts tray. Doesn't have to be a commercial one. I mean, commercial ones are fine. Uh, there's folks out there that have these magnetic trays from automobile uh, repair. That's wonderful. Not everything is my magnetic. Uh, most of this reel is not magnetic. It's graphite and uh, stainless. But that's okay if you want to uh, use uh, a magnetic parts tray or you want to use anything else that's commercially available, go for it. The idea is to have a central repository for your pieces and parts so that you can locate them easily. These screws are cross, cross screws. You can use either a, a Phillips head or a, um, a flat bladed screwdriver. I find that the flat bladed screwdriver works a little bit better. I think that's some kind of a machine tool uh, that is uh, used there. And uh, I don't get as good a grip as I would like to with the, um, with the Phillips head. So I use that flat bladed one. It's always good to have a series of different sizes of uh, screwdrivers on your bench. You'll never know uh, when you'll need them. And I know a lot of folks notice the baskets of tools that I have behind me there. They're usually off camera, but I have a whole series easily within arm's range. Um, and for that, I like to know that I have the thing close by so that I don't have to put the reel down or walk too far away in terms of getting it. Of course, everybody else who watches my videos kind of questions, wow, that screw is tight. And uh, just be patient. It will come out in due time. All right, there we go. I think we finally got that one loose. And again, these are in a commercial environment, so it's not surprising if you find that the uh, there's an unusual accumulation of salt and the like. I'm going to use my blade of my screwdriver or of my utility knife there just to uh, make sure that we can hold and uh, separate the case easily. All right, we're coming down to what in the world can this possibly be? We're still stuck 
and yet the interior doesn't show any broken pieces so we're just going to continue to, to, to remove now. We're going to take this off first. You take the axle shaft off by removing the set screw and the cross wind block and right now I'm kind of saying a little prayer here that uh, we don't have two uh, screws in there because if we do we're in trouble because this does not have a, a uh, reverse and we probably have the two. So this one is going to be particularly troublesome and I have to get whatever play we can get to see a little bit more. put the handle in again. Let's see if I can just use the handle to remove that or at least unseat that main gear. Wow. Okay, well I was able to just move it up off of the pinion gear. Let's get that off again. Okay, so I started getting a little bit of movement now. So I'm going to start trying to turn this to, to back down that cross wind block so that I could expose that second piece of uh, tie down here with the Phillips head screw. Wow, I'm thinking bent axle shaft here. It really is tight. And I have a replacement if that's the case. All right, with both of those out, we should be able to remove that axle shaft. Now we should be able to remove the main gear. Now the cross wind block. Now the cross wind or oscillating gear. And of course now the question is what's what's the cause? Now the rotor now is spinning freely. It, it's obviously got a lot of dried grease and everything here. A lot of salt build up. This is typical of what I would have expected to see with the commercial use of this wheel. And I'm thinking bent axle shaft. That seems to be the biggest issue here. And one way to test that is once you've removed the other pieces, try sliding the, the axle shaft in yeah, it's very rough it, as it's coming down. Not terribly, but it is got a little bit of a... Just make sure that it's operating free. So that it pushed a lot of stuff out, and it also was a little bit tight in terms of coming in. So we'll just continue to do this then. We'll show you how to take this apart completely. We're going to clean all of these pieces. We're going to make sure there's no damage, like broken teeth. And then we'll try and solve this mystery completely here. All right, so the next thing off then is to remove the tie down on the rotor. I'm just going to leave that piece here for a moment. The, the bearing is out. I'm going to take the cap that holds the rotor off. Pull the rotor. This is the uh, anti-reverse clip that works on the sawtooth underneath. You do have an instant re anti-reverse. This is an assist to that. Also up top, you may not notice it, but there is a little uh, ferrule that rides in that axle shaft that comes off with that little clip. So we're going to put that in our parts tray. We're going to remove the that anti-reverse uh, assist here, it's an eccentric spring. It goes that, There's a little hook here, it might be hard for you to see that. There's a little hook on it, it points up. So note the orientation on that. And that little hook is going to go in the pinhole here when we reinstall. There's a little hole here. So just put those in the parts tray. Note the, uh, the pieces. Again, take pictures along the way if you have any questions about the orientation on this reel uh, for reassembly. Now, of course, I'm taking pictures with the video. You could also go out and get a schematic 
if you don't have the one that came with the reel, if one was provided in your parts box, for, for example, uh, go ahead and use that schematic. But uh, mysticparts.com has schematics as well. And if you, uh, if you need that burst diagram to show you the orientation of the pieces and the parts, uh, by all means go get that before you get started, because that will tell you a little bit about how these reels are made. So this reel itself, the design is very similar to the Penn Fierce 1 and 2. This is the Fierce 3, uh, 1 and 2. There is a difference in the ball bearings that they're using and in the drag system that they're using. But other than that, uh, essentially, uh, it remains somewhat unchanged. This uh, reel is very close to the Pen Battle 2 uh, because of the drag system. All right, this is the pinion gear assembly. We want to pull out for cleaning. It should just pop right out, and fortunately it did. And now it's time to go do some cleaning. Let's just give you an idea of what's here before. So this is the, uh, the shielded bearing that's in the, uh, the carrier. That comes up this way. Notice that there's two pieces in this carrier. There's a carrier that has a cup that holds the bearing, and there's a carrier that has the bottom of it is a um, got a little lip on it. So when you go to reinstall, it goes down this way as such, and if you put it over the wrong way, it's not going to operate properly for you. Next up then is the anti-reverse bearing and ferrule that we didn't and a bearing below. So those are your pieces there. And this is coming, I'm sure this is exactly how it was um, built at the plant. I know this reel hasn't been serviced before. The uh, boat kind of uses this, uh, use it until it breaks philosophy. And then call, call Dennis. <laughs> and he'll, uh, he'll try and uh, make it work again. And uh, so I know this, this is how it came from the plant. Not a bad thing, just uh, we have talked on other videos about how they overload the reels with grease. Uh, that's okay. Um, in this case, most of that grease is either absorbed or dried or evaporated. And uh, that's what we're going to kind of clean out now. So I use a, um, a penetrating oil to loosen the grease. I use a series of cotton swabs and paper towels and elbow grease, if you will, to clean. Get all the dried stuff out of there because dried grease is just as good as dirt. It's just going to uh, impact the performance of the reel, slow it down most of the time. And then once we clean this case up, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the, uh, the gearing parts. Something jammed it. And whatever that something was, you don't want to just kind of Assume that just because you cleaned the reel, everything is okay. So we'll just clean out the channel there. Got the grease out. A little bit more grease below here. I'm not noticing any damage to the case, so there wasn't any broken parts there. I think it may just be that it, uh, it ran out of the lubrication and uh, something got in there and jammed it. This is your anti-reverse bearing. I'm just going to clean the old grease off of that. Notice on your anti-reverse bearing, there's two sides. There's a white plastic side and there's a metal side. On this reel, the white plastic side goes down. We have two bearings in here. One of them is a shielded bearing. One of them, I believe, is a sealed bearing. The blue collared bearing goes up top sits in the collar like that. Once you clean it, you can put some some oil on that. I don't know the absorption rate of either, but it doesn't hurt to put it on there. Same thing with the one below. Make sure that your pinion gear is cleaned. I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to use uh, Pen Precision Real Grease to relube this. And because this is commercial use, I'll probably be very generous with the grease again just like it came out of the plant. And just because I know the next time that this uh, reel is going to get greased, it'll probably be on me. And it'll probably be longer than it should have been for service. Okay, get a little bit of grease onto the side shaft of that pinion gear. 
we can go ahead and reinstall. There's a bearing that goes next. And we have our anti-reverse. Just a little bit of stuff on there. You want to put the collar, you can put it on either way. You want to get that collar set. And that goes down. And then you notice that there's that ridge where the collar sits. It's proud. It doesn't sit flush. And that's why this collar here has that, uh, that extra lip on it, if you will. All right. That's our pinion gear assembly. We can go ahead and put that back in. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's been moved. Let's go back into our parts tray then. Get some of this dirt off the piece. We'll find the, the tie down. Notice that there is a flat section to this. This is not a perfect circular pattern on the outside. There's one side that has a flat piece to it. That flat piece rides over here where that anti-reverse arm is. And we have our three small screws. Into my parts tray for that. And those of you that watch the video probably know it's time for you to go for coffee because I'm working with small parts. Fortunately, this little uh, plate that holds down that assembly has a little ridge on it to enable me to get those screws started most of the time. But. Uh, Yes, except that uh, you're not always going to be perfect with these things. All right, there's two. If any luck will be three. I'll show you how to set that eccentric spring. We'll tie up the top. And then we'll figure out what's going on in the body that's causing this thing to freeze. It's very unusual for it to freeze. But I have noticed, particularly with the, uh, the reels that do not have that anti-reverse override, that uh, if you get something stuck in there, there's no way of backing it out. It's a, uh, it's a problem, and it's a problem particularly with these reels. And a lot of times something breaks because you're at the top of the stroke with that uh, crosswind block, and, uh, and you can't get it free, much like what happened with me with that, uh, This, the stroke here with that needing to get that second piece out of the, uh, the equation. Turn it, make sure that it's working here. You can take your rotor and install that, uh, oh, that anti-reverse. So this has got the eccentric arm on it. Remember what I said about that angular piece there. There's a 90 degree turn on that spool, uh, on that sp spring. It's right here. That needs to go in the hole here, and that hole is going to ride this way. So actually, probably is easier to do it. Taking this off, putting it into the hole. You got to kind of do that visually, but it's in the hole. It's probably hard to see, but it's in that hole. Then slipping it over the top of the pinning gear and making sure that that channel is with that stud. So this is how it's going to operate. You'll see as you back off, it's going to push it out. As you roll it in, it's going to pull it in. All right, this rotor assembly is next. You could put a little bit of oil. This is just a bail trip arm here. There's no springs or anything in there, but you could put a little bit of oil into that especially with the heavy usage that this reel receives. We can line that up. Now we're looking for our tie down. That's got a key in it, so you got to just match it up to the, the slot. Then there's a little plastic up here for the axle shaft that sits next and then you can put the cap nut on. I happen to like this cap nut because you can't over tighten it. It's got a, uh, an extension out that it, when you bottom out on it you're done. Tighten it up as much as you can by hand and then finish that with a, uh, a wrench. 
is our 14 millimeter. Give it a spin, make sure it's doing what it should be doing. Test the bail. Everything's working there. You can put a little oil into the channels of the bail. Put some on the line roller. And now we gotta figure out what's going on below. First thing to do then is to check the teeth of the main gear. You wanna check it from both sides here. You wanna check to make sure that all of the teeth are uniform this way, that there's no chips or cracks. This is very dried grease here. You can just see how it comes off. So that didn't help the performance, that's for sure. And uh, check the back teeth here for the oscillating gear. They seem to be okay, other than dirty. So go ahead and clean out the channel. And I use this little pick to do just that. And I keep the paper towel there. It's a good thing just to, to kind of put the old grease on and you can toss it away and get new. You can use a variety of scrapers. Here's another screwdriver I just had laying on my desk. You can see kind of how that stuff is all just congealed. You can use a pick to clean the channels of those teeth. You can also use a brush. I've been preferring the brush lately. So the main gear looks okay. Dry, but okay. So there's only a couple other components in this that could have bogged down. And again, we don't have a, a definitive answer here. We just know that it's seized, which is never a good thing. But uh, we're good here. All of the teeth on the back side as well as the front side of this has been cleaned. I'm just checking because every now and then a piece breaks off and gets caught in a tooth. And that, that'll stop it. But I'm not seeing that on either side here. So I'm going to say that this is okay right now. Next up then would be to check the oscillating gear. So this is our oscillating gear. And you want to do the same thing. You want to make sure that the teeth are okay. There's something going on here. I don't know what that is, just maybe some more dried grease and dirt. But you're doing the same thing essentially that you did with the other. In this case, I'm just going to do the same thing with the, the brush here, make sure that that's all working. So this may be coming down to a bent axle shaft. We're going to find out when we put it back together. And I do have replacement uh, axle shafts. So if that's bent, then it wouldn't be unusual to believe that that could be the case. Um, then we can replace that before we uh, leave the video. And the other thing is that uh, it may just be that there was a whole host of dried grease inside that pinion gear, which I noticed when I was showing you how to test for that uh, uh, the other operation. All right, we're going to take this barring and clean off that old grease. And grab our oil, make sure that the barn gets some oil. Reinstall the bearing in the case. We've cleaned our crosswind gear. This gear gets grease everywhere. It gets grease on the back here because it's going to rub the case. It gets grease on the front because the crosswind block is going to ride on that. And it gets grease in the teeth. When you set this, find the stud and locate it to the bottom of the body, and I'm not sure if I remember if I need to move the uh, move it back down there after I put the, the crosswind block in. And again, you can probably see right now why that glove helps. I'm still getting some of my my hand that I can't use that glove on. That's some wear on that, but well. We'll see. Let's just clean that out as well. Clean that channel where that stud is going to ride. There's a lot of old kind of accumulated grease in there as well. Just make sure you get that out of there. It's nobody's friend. And then we can come back and we can fresh grease that. And then if we can't slip this over, some of these you can't slip over. You have to go to the top of the stroke and bring it back down. Uh, this one, yeah, we're okay here. All right, 
So you reload this then. Next up would be to put the main gear in. We want to do the same thing here. Let me get this towel out of there. It's getting pretty dirty. You want to make sure that you put all the good amount of grease onto the teeth of the main gear. Same thing with the back end here. It's going to drive the cross wind gear. Go ahead and put that on. And then we can grab that axle shaft. Now the axle shaft seems smooth. And again, my guess would be that this is the culprit because they take a beating on the boat. And if they hit a rail or if they hit uh, have a big fish that's at the top of the stroke, uh, it could cause the problem. So we'll just put that in. It seems to be going in a whole lot easier than it came out. We'll grab those two pieces. Whoops. That's an oops. Yep, that's an oops. Before you uh, put that axle shaft in, you want to put your tie back on. That's going to hold the rotor nut from slipping. That's why a parts tray to me is, is invaluable, because I can look in there and I can see that I missed something. And yeah, if I put that axle shaft in there, then I have to take the whole reel apart to, to do it again. So let's go put the axle shaft back on. two flathead screws we took out. And then we're going to give this thing a test because we should see a good operation here. And if it stops at some point, then we know that we didn't, that it wasn't dried grease that was the problem. If we notice something is hanging, it's almost certain that it will be the axle shaft the rest of it, the teeth were fine and the gears and so on. Okay, so just give that a ride, turn it. It seems, seems, seems like right there is where it's going. So I'm going to stop my video for a minute. I'm going to get a new axle shaft. I'm going to put that in and see if that fixes the problem. So we're going to remove the old axle shaft. I just found a new one. I take those two set screws and a cross wind block out. Probably dangerous, but I'm going to leave them right on my, my bench here. Let's pull the old axle shaft out. And we're going to have to transfer this washer. But for the moment, we're just going to put this in and see if this is the difference maker. Very interesting. Put this back together. We'll see what the the feel is. Very unusual. The good news is we've got it running again. Okay, that's smooth. I'm not feeling that same same hang on the bottom, so I'm going to say it was the axle shaft. Okay, so let's button this up then. Now you just saw me slap the side plate on. I probably should have oiled that bearing first, but I was more concerned that, uh, that there was still work to be done inside. Let's go ahead and oil that bearing. I'm also noticing I might not have gotten that last turn or two on that cross wind block, so let's close that up. Bring this back. So a lot of times it's kind of hit and miss with the problem diagnosis. There's a lot of things that are involved in terms of components in that drive chain and you just sort of have to do process of elimination. So you saw that I started with the gearing, because if something's broken, it's almost always in that gear. A missing tooth, a warp, a, uh, a bent or broken piece, 
For example, that stud on that oscillating gear could have broken off. Or some other debris that got in there, like broken line. That's, I think I started the conversation by saying, let's see if we have broken line below. Uh, and then it's just a process of elimination. And in this case, I was fortunate to have a spare um, axle shaft. And when I swapped them out, we noticed a marked difference right away. But we also noticed that there was a lot of dried grease and there were a lot of other uh, issues that needed to be attended to there in order to, uh, to fully service this reel. So I think we're back. I think this reel is going to go fishing again. And uh, this one makes sense now. So a lot of folks say, geez, you're throwing a lot of parts at it. So I think we were talking about that. This is a rental reel on a uh, commercial fishing boat. It fishes pretty much every day. Let's say the list price on this thing is $100. Uh, let's say it costs 5 or $10 to rent this thing. After a couple of weeks, you've paid for the reel. And uh, it's um, been making money for a while now. So you look at this and you say, okay, should I buy a new reel because this one's seized? Or should I throw parts at it? And uh, in this case, the axle shaft, I think, is 8 or $9. Um, and that seems like it's the only piece other than a lot of grease in my service fees. So if you're getting your, your uh, reel redone at a fraction of the price of a new one, then yeah, it makes sense to go service that. Now, Stuart from England just mentioned he's got a, uh, an opportunity to buy a Surf Blaster, which is a pen reel that's only sold, uh, it's not sold in the U.S. It's a, uh, I guess we would call it pit reels, uh, but it's a, a big reel, but it's not made in the U.S. And apparently it was dropped and it's damaged, and he was asking me uh, how much is it a good buy at a, at a particular Price and, and my point was to him was if you can get it for less than the about 50% when you're all in with the parts and everything else, if you can get it in for less than 50% of the new cost of the reel, then you're okay. Uh, but if you're going to go more than that, uh, then you're just going to you're going to have to make your own decision on that. But I wouldn't purchase it at that price. So I've taken the retainer clip out of the the spool body. This has got the HT100 uh, drag washers in it. You can tell that there, there's wear on them. It's not terrible, but there's wear on them. And uh, Pen greases these, so I'm going to grease them on the way back in. There's one interesting note here. Normally you have two keyed washers and an eared washer. In this case, they're all keyed because the drag washers themselves have the ears on them and sit in the channel. So I'm going to use Cal's Universal Dry Grease. We're going to go ahead and load those washers up. Wipe off any excess if you have a lot on there. In this case, pretty much know what I guess the right amount is. First one of these in, make sure they're clean. Let's do that again. This is where the glove comes in handy. It becomes a tool and you don't have to worry about getting that all over your hands. I'll set that one back in. And uh, there's wear on these, but if you can see the cross hatching on these, uh, you can continue to use them. It's when that cross hatching wears off that uh, they've really gone too far in terms of wear. It's sort of like the treads on tires. Uh, you, you'll know when your tr tire is kind of wearing thin, and you kind of do that here as well. All right, last of the, your, your, the HC100 washers. There's a little bit more dirt left on that one. Let's get that done. Put my grease away. We have my retainer clip. There's a groove that it rides in. Go find that groove. Don't be confused on this one. There's two grooves here. It belongs in a lower groove. It's not a very high tension spring, but it is a spring, so make sure that you treat it as such. You don't want to go searching around for this thing if it shoots. And right now I'm getting a little trouble because I'm having this thing hit in the recesses for the, the dry washers. There's one. There's two. We're in the way we belong. Let's take that, grab that over the top here. Okay. 
always tough to work on wheels with line, but I respect that the, uh, they don't want to change the line, so we're going to leave it that way. However, there's a hook here, so let's go hook that line so it doesn't get any more in the way. six inches of line there. All right, let's put that handle on, give it that final test, put that little cap on the other side. And this one's ready to go catch some bluefish. This handle is interchangeable if you want to use a left or a right-handed uh, drive. Most of the time it's set up for the right. There you go. Well, from a reel that was frozen to a reel that's ready to go fishing again. There is a little bit of gear, gear noise in there. I'm going to just say that that's probably worth the whole season's worth of uh, fighting some big fish. But uh, that's kind of to be expected and you don't need to change the gears out just for that little bit of noise there. All right. So, wow, that's uh, quite an adventure. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please like it. If you have questions about any fishing reels, please uh, leave them in the comment section. It doesn't have to be about this reel. Uh, but if you have a question, I'll be happy to try and answer it for you. If you're stuck on the reassembly of a reel or, or problem diagnosis like we just went through, I'll try and help you out with that as well. I ask you to subscribe. Uh, subscriptions keep my uh, channel vibrant and uh, it kind of keeps me going in these tough days. And again, if you're a first responder or essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. Finally, if you have a reel that needs to be serviced or repaired and you don't want to do it yourself, well, contact me by email on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with the repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.